In this video, we are going to do a Comp TIA Cloud Plus certification practice test. As always, we will be using one of the most popular practice test websites, Skill Test Pro. So, let's get started. The first question is, a company's SLA guarantees 99.9% .9 uptime. How much maximum downtime is allowed per month? 4.32 hours, 8.76 hours, 14.4 minutes, 43.2 minutes, or 99.9 .9 minutes. What do you guys think? The correct answer is 43.2 minutes. With the 99% uptime, the allowed downtime per month is calculated as 1 minus 0.999 times 30 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes giving you 43.2 minutes. Question two. A cloud administrator detects unusual login attempts from multiple locations on an admin account. What is the best immediate action? Change the administrator's password, disable the account and escalate the issue, enable multi-factor authentication, conduct a forensic investigation, or Block all inbound traffic from external locations. We'll give you a few moments to figure it out. And the correct answer is disable the account and escalate the issue. Disabling the account prevents further unauthorized access while an incident response team investigates the breach. Moving on. Which backup strategy is the most cost effective for long term data storage in the cloud? Full backup, incremental backup, differential backup, cold storage backup, or RAID mirroring? Take a few moments. And the correct answer is cold storage backup. Cold storage backup is a low-cost cloud storage option designed for long-term archival with in infrequent access, making it ideal for compliance and regulatory retention. Question 4. A company wants to store sensitive customer data in the cloud while ensuring that even the cloud provider cannot access it. Which encryption method should they use? Data at rest encryption. Transport Layer Security, TLS, Server-Side Encryption, Hashing, or Client-Side Encryption. What do you think? And the correct answer is Client-Side Encryption. Client-Side Encryption encrypts data before it is uploaded to the cloud, ensuring that a cloud provider cannot decrypt it. Question six, which security challenge is the most common in a multi-cloud environment? Vendor lock-in, lack of encryption, performance degradation, reduced availability, or inconsistent security policies? Take a few moments on your own. The correct answer is inconsistent security policies because Multi-cloud environments require unified security policies across different providers, which can be complex to manage. Next question. Which cloud migration strategy involves moving applications without major modifications? Rehost, refactor, rebuild, replace, or retire? The correct answer here is rehost. Rehosting, lift and shift, moves applications without modifying their code, making it the fastest migration method. Moving on to question seven. Which cloud feature allows automatic resource allocation based on real-time demand? Vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, auto scaling, resource throttling, or load balancing? What do you guys think? The correct answer is auto scaling. 
Auto scaling dynamically adjusts cloud resources up or down based on demand to optimize performance and cost. Question eight, which tool is used to analyze log data and detect security threats? IDS slash IPS, SIEM, firewall, load balancer, or reverse proxy? What do you think? The correct answer is SIEM, or a security information and event management system collects and analyzes log data for security monitoring and threat detection. Question nine, which IAM method centralizes authentication across multiple cloud providers and services? Role-based access control, multi-factor authentication, identity federation, biometric authentication, or token-based authentication. I'll give you a few moments. And the correct answer is identity federation. Identity federation allows authentication across multiple cloud providers using a central identity provider, IDP, like SAML or OAuth. Halfway, which tool is best suited for automating cloud infrastructure deployment using infrastructure as a code, IAC? Kubernetes, Chef, Heraform, Jenkins, or Puppet? Take a few moments. The correct answer is Terraform. Terraform is an infrastructure as a code, IAC, tool that automates cloud infrastructure deployment using declarative configurations. Question 11. Which cloud compliance framework is used to ensure the security of financial transactions? GDPR, PCI DSS, HIPAA, ISO 27001 or FedRAMP? What do you think? The correct answer is PCI DSS or Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. This is a compliance framework for securing financial transactions and payment data in cloud environments. Next question. Which cloud pricing model charges customers based on actual resource consumption rather than fixed monthly fees? Subscription-based pricing, pay-as-you-go, reserved instances, spot pricing, or fixed-term contract? The correct answer is pay-as-you-go. Pay-as-you-go pricing allows businesses to only pay for the cloud's resources they use, optimizing cost efficiency. Question 13. Which container orchestration tool is commonly used to manage and deploy cloud native applications across multiple cloud environments? Docker, Ansible, Terraform, Kubernetes, or Jenkins? Take a few moments. The correct answer is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a widely used container orchestration platform for managing cloud native applications in multi-cloud and hybrid environments. Question 14. A company wants to secure API communications between its cloud-based applications. Which security methods should be implement implemented? TLS encryption, Firewall rules, VPN, IDS slash IPS, or container sandboxing. What do you think? The correct answer is TLS encryption. TLS, Transport Layer Security, ensures encrypted and secure API communication over the cloud network. Moving on. A cloud provider provides an RTO, 
of one hour and an RPO of 15 minutes for disaster recovery. What does this mean? Data loss cannot exceed one hour and services must be restored within 15 minutes. Data loss cannot exceed 15 minutes and services must be restored within one hour. All cloud services must be back online within one hour and backups occur every 15 minutes. The provider provides the provider backs up data every one hour and guarantees full recovery in 15 minutes. Lastly, the provider offers a maximum downtime of one hour with no guarantee data recovery. Take your time on this one. The correct answer is data loss cannot exceed 15 minutes and services must be restored within one hour. This is because RPO, or Recovery Point Objective, defines the maximum acceptable data loss, which is 15 minutes in this question, while RTO, or Recovery Time Objective, defines the maximum downtime allowed, which is one hour. Question 16. Which security mechanism ensures that cloud users authenticate with multiple methods before gaining access to resources? Role-based access control, single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, identity federation, or principle of least privilege? Give you a few seconds. And the correct answer is multi-factor authentication or MFA. MFA requires users to authenticate using at least two different methods, for example, a password and a one-time code to enhance security. Question 17. A company needs a scalable cloud storage solution that automatically replicates data across multiple geographical regions. Which storage solution should it use? Block storage, object storage, file storage, local storage, or tape backup? What do you think? The correct answer is object storage. Object storage is ideal for scalable cloud storage, automatically distributing data across multiple locations for redundancy and availability. Question 18. A cloud architect is designing a secure environment where resources from multiple tenants are isolated within the same cloud provider. Which technology achieves this? VLAN, SDN, VPN, VPC, or MPLS? Take a few moments to answer this yourself. And the correct answer is VPC, or a virtual private cloud network, allows tenants to have an isolated network within a cloud provider, ensuring secure communication and resource separation. Question 19. Which cloud service model provides virtualized computing resources over the internet allowing users to configure their own networking, storage, and computing power. Is it software as a service, platform as a service, function as a service, or container as a service, or infrastructure as a service? What do you think? The correct answer is infrastructure as a service, or EOS. EOS provides users with computing resources such as virtual machines, storage, and networking, allowing them to configure infrastructure as needed. And the last question, question 20. An organization requires a cloud solution that allows it to combine private and public cloud resources to optimize cost and scalability while maintaining sensitive workloads internally. Which deployment model should it use? Public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, community cloud, or on-premises cloud. 
Take your time, so the last question. And the correct answer is hybrid cloud. A hybrid cloud combines both public and private cloud models, allowing organizations to use the public cloud for scalable resources while keeping sensitive workloads in the private cloud. Well, that's it for this video. And if you're interested in more videos like this, check out the channel for more. Also, I will leave links to Skill Test Pro in the description and in the first comment of this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.